Welcome to Movement and Function. I'm Beth Wagner, physical therapist. Today's video is about scapular dyskinesis. First, I'll do a quick anatomy review and then show you seven excellent active range of motion exercises to begin to treat scapular dyskinesis. I'm also going to post a second video with five wonderful strengthening exercises. As I'll talk about in this video, it's very important to start with the active range of motion exercises and then move on to the strengthening exercises at a later time. And that's why I've, I've created these videos as part one and part two. First, a quick anatomy review. Now, scapular dyskinesis refers to abnormal movement of the scapula or shoulder blade during arm elevation while lifting your arm. Now this is different than typical shoulder pain, which usually focuses on the shoulder joint here, where the humerus or the arm bone meets the edge of the shoulder blade that forms the joint that we typically think of as the shoulder joint. Now this video is focused on the scapulothoracic joint, which is where the shoulder blade meets the rib cage. The key to treating scapular dyskinesis successfully is to restore scapulothoracic rhythm. As we lift our arm, the shoulder blade needs to move, needs to rotate along the ribs of the thorax. When this rhythm is out of sync, pain may occur in the shoulder joint, along the collarbone, along the shoulder blade on the outside or the inside and pain may also occur in the neck or the upper and mid back. One of the primary causes of scapular dyskinesis is repetitive use of the shoulder, especially with poor posture or poor body mechanics, resulting in tightness and or weakness in the muscles that connect the scapula to the ribs and thoracic spine. The first goal is to restore normal scapulothoracic rhythm and normal active range of motion of the shoulder. Okay, let's get started with the active range of motion exercises. The first exercise is scapular squeeze or shoulder blade squeeze. Starting with good posture, with your chest lifted, shoulder blades back and down, and a little bit of a chin tuck. Rest your arms by your side and squeeze your shoulder blades back and down as if you're bringing your shoulder blades closer together in the back and relax. Again, squeeze them back and down and relax. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, let them slide down toward your back pockets and rest. Squeeze together, slide down and rest. Continue with slow, smooth movement for 20 repetitions. The next exercise is shoulder flexion using a stick or a dowel. So here I'm using a selfie stick. You could use a Swiffer stick, broom stick, any kind of dowel. Um, you wanna choose something light that's about uh, three feet long or so. I'll demonstrate these exercises for right scapular dyskinesis. So I'll hold the base of the stick with my left hand and hold the top of the stick with my right hand, thumb up and with my arm forward. Using the left arm to guide the stick, I'll push my arm up, thumb toward the ceiling, and lift my arm as high up as I feel comfortable going, pause there, and then come back to the starting position. So this movement is forward. I'm lifting my arm forward right in front of me, up as high as I can, and then lower it. Also try matching your breathing pattern with the motion so that you exhale as you lift the arm and then inhale as you lower the arm. Again, this motion should be slow and smooth. There should be no jerking in this motion. There should be control on the way up and on the way down. Now I'm using my right arm about 50% and my left arm about 50%. See what feels best for you and feel free to adjust how much you're lifting versus pushing as it feels right for you. The next exercise is scaption using the stick. Scaption refers to range of motion of the arm at about 45 degrees out to the side. So starting in the same position with the left arm at the base of the stick and the right arm at the top of the stick. Now I'm going to lift my right arm and 
guide with my left arm at 45 degrees. Push up as far as you feel comfortable and slowly lower with control. And repeat. Lift up at 45 degree angle, as high as you feel comfortable, pause, and then slowly lower. Continue 20 repetitions of scaption. Next up is abduction using the stick. Now we'll move the arm straight out to the side. Now if it is too painful for you to move your arm all the way out to the side, feel free to bring this forward a little bit. I'll show you what I mean by that. So starting in the same position with the left hand at the base of the stick, the right hand at the top of the stick, now I'll lift my right arm and guide with my left arm out to the side and up overhead as far as you feel comfortable and then back down. If that motion is painful, then bring your hand out a little bit. So you're somewhere between where you were for scaption, which was 45 degrees, and abduction, which is 90 degrees. The purpose of this is to lift your arm at different angles. So you can choose the angles that feels best for you, that feels like you're improving your range of motion. Gradually over time, see if you can work up to lifting your arm straight out to the side at 90 degrees and back down. Continue 20 repetitions of abduction with smooth motion, controlled on the way up and controlled on the way down. Make sure you're not holding your breath at any time during these exercises. Continuing to breathe with smooth, even breathing pattern will help decrease pain and help increase motion. Next is horizontal abduction, again using the stick. The first part of the exercise is to lift your arm using the other arm to guide you until your hand is just below your shoulder. Make sure your thumb is pointed up. From the starting position, move your hand out to the side, keeping your hand just below the shoulder level. Go as far as you feel comfortable with smooth motion, pause here, and then come back to the starting position. Start out with a small range of motion, gradually build up repetition by repetition, session by session, day by day, etc. Continue moving your arm out to the side, pause, and then come back to the starting position. Continue 20 repetitions, or as many as you feel comfortable doing, and then rest. Once you've completed 20 repetitions, go ahead and lower your right arm back to your side. And then go ahead and put the stick down. We're finished with the exercises with the stick. Next is bilateral shoulder external rotation with abduction, or W for short, because we're going to make a W shape with our arms. Standing with tall posture, chest lifted, shoulder blades down and back, chin a little bit tucked, starting position for all these exercises. Lift your hands up, bending your elbows about 90 degrees. Keep your palms facing each other, thumbs up toward the ceiling. Now squeeze your shoulder blades and bring your hands out to the side as far as it feels comfortable for you. Now from here, we're gonna lift our hands up toward the ceiling, which will make the W shape. So I'll lift up and hopefully that looks about like a W or so. Pause here. Don't keep your arms up in this position for a long time, just a couple seconds. And then lower your hands all the way back down to the starting position. And lift up and out again, squeezing your blades. Pause and lower. Now this exercise is very helpful to pattern with our breathing. So start by inhaling to prepare for the exercise, th in through the nose. And then as you exhale, Squeeze the blades, lift your arms up and out, pause. Inhale when you come back down. Continue with slow, smooth movement. Exhaling, squeeze, lift, inhale, lower with control, back to the starting position. Now if that breathing pattern doesn't feel comfortable for you, that's just fine. Feel free to modify that, adjust it as it feels best for you. The final exercise is a doorway pec stretch. Now I'm going to show you just standing here in free space in my studio, but I will include a picture here that will show um, this exercise up against a doorway. So starting in good posture, imagine a doorway right here next to me. 
going to lift my arm up so my elbow is at about my shoulder level. And my palm and forearm are going to go right against the door jamb. And I'm not pressing into the door jamb. I'm just placing my hand there, allowing the door jamb to hold my arm up. From here, I'm going to step forward with my right foot so that my arm goes back, being held up in the doorway. I feel a stretch through the front of my chest, a little bit through the front of my arm. That's where I want to feel it. Hold this position while breathing for about 5 to 30 seconds, depending on what is most comfortable for you. The longer the hold, the better the stretch. But if at any point in time you feel sharp shooting pain or pins and needles in your arm, your hand, then step back and lower your arm right away. Shake that out and try it again. You might also want to vary how high up your arm is lifted. Since the pectoral muscle is fan-shaped, there are fibers going in different directions. So I recommend starting with your elbow at about 90 degrees and then adjusting your arm down a little bit and perform the stretch again and then adjust your arm up a little bit and step forward and perform the stretch again. Step back and lower the arm. Perform three repetitions on each side. Now the, the pec stretch is very helpful to do on both sides, even if your pain is only located on one side, because it's very helpful to maintain symmetry. Oftentimes, pectoral tightness on one side can actually affect shoulder function and neck and mid-back and everything on the other side. So three times on each side, alternating left and right side. I hope you find these active range of motion exercises helpful to begin to address your scapular dyskinesis. As I mentioned in the beginning, once you're able to complete these exercises with relative ease, no pain, and fluid motion, then move on to my next video, part two, with the strengthening exercises. The link to that video is in the description down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. It not only helps my channel, but that also tells YouTube that this is helpful information and it'll help this video get out to other people who could benefit from it just like you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm able. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.